Hello, and welcome to Asphalt Shingles and the Code, based on the 2018 IRC. This session is on inspections, and we're mainly going to be talking about this guy today, the inspector, and what his perspective and experiences are as he's heading up this ladder on all these random homes to inspect their roofs. This is really just a fun session to intended to give a little bit of perspective into the side of things from an inspection point of view. So the first bit of advice I'll give, and there'll be lots of little advice like this through this session, but one quick one is when you're walking on roofs, walk in the valleys, the ridges, the hips. These are going to be the shallowest places to walk. And generally, my rule as an inspector was a 612 pitch was the steepest pitch I would get on. Beyond that, I would break out my binoculars and do the inspection from the ground and from the roof edges with my ladder. So let's first talk about the arrival, the inspector's arrival on site. And often we come up to these doors of these homes we've never been to and homeowners that may not be expecting us, and we see signs like this. If you don't have an appointment or we don't know you, don't disturb us. So it can often already be a little cautious coming into these inspections. Sometimes the owners open the door pretty ugly to answer before they realize you're an inspector. Other times you see no soliciting signs like this. Please, no more roofing companies. This is what happens when you have a storm in your community and you've got a lot of roofing salesmen going door to door to door. This makes, again, a time where you really hate to be the guy knocking on the door unannounced and they don't know you're coming. So what I do in these cases is I've always be sure to park my truck, my city truck, right in front of the front windows of the house or the front door. So hopefully if they're peering out to see what random knock on the door is occurring in the middle of their afternoon, they'll see it's an inspector and not bite my head off when they answer. Sometimes you come to doors and you see notes like this, Welcome home, sweet baby boy Chase. This is a signal to you. This is a signal to not be a jerk to be a good, respectful part of your community. Knock very gently. Be a lot more patient waiting at the door for the answer. Don't ring the doorbell. Understand what it's like. If you haven't raised three kids like I have, let me give you a clue. Don't upset a mom with a sleeping baby. Be as respectful as you can and still try to get your job done. So what about access? The next thing is how do we access and get on these roofs to do our inspections? Now, in my jurisdiction, I was pretty proud that we had a lot of ladders, folding ladders, long ladders. We showed up intending to get our job done. But this is not the norm for most building departments. And the IRC doesn't even back that up. The IRC states that it shall be the duty of the person requesting any inspection required by the code to provide access to and means for such inspection of work. So it really is the contractor's job to provide the access for inspection. And some contractors take this very seriously, clearly wanting to make sure their inspections get done that day. And this is always nice when you can show up to a house and there's a ladder sitting there waiting for you. And you don't have to pull the ladder off of your truck and fumble with it in the yard trying to get onto the roof. Other times that ladder is set for you and maybe not with the most thought for your safety. And in these cases, I might move or relocate the ladder to a place where it's not covered in snow. Of course, if there's snow on a roof, I'm probably not going to be able to do a sufficient roof inspection. And then sometimes the ladder's placed like this where, I don't know, I'm not part of Cirque du Soleil. I don't really want to take the risk of trying to scale the ladder that's sitting on a sloped roof below. So these situations, I just won't, won't accept risking my safety for a simple roof inspection. So here I am again with my own ladders. And when it comes time to setting up your own ladders, I always recommend to put the ladders up against the double gutters installed on the house. Gutters can take the, the leaning of the ladder a lot better than the edge of shingles can. Yeah, this was an interesting po photo, right? Sometimes you see some really weird stuff when you show up to these homes. I have no idea why they would install a gutter over another gutter. But back to roof inspections. Sometimes you have to place your roof against a rake edge like this, but this can be a risky move because you bend over the shingles that overhang the edge. This is when I really like to see edge metal like this edge metal, and it's hard to see from this picture, but this edge metal has a horizontal fold that comes out and supports the bottom side of the shingles. So when you lean your ladder against it, you're not bending the shingles over. Other times the contractors or the homeowners swear to you that no ladder is required to access the roof. 
and you're not really sure what they mean by that until you show up to the house and realize, oh, yeah, no ladder was really required. But just in case, these folks left me a ladder, just in case, I suppose. Now, there's also some hazard in involved with coming to these randoms homes that you've never been to to do these roof replacement inspections. And sometimes these hazards show up before you even get out of your car. I swear this demonic cat had, my, had a bloodthirst for me as I waited in my car before I got out and noticed that he was staring me down. Not really a hazard, I suppose, but sometimes you're trying to get up on the roof and you wonder, I don't know, that's a pretty heavily guarded roof at the moment. Should I really get up and try to do this inspection with the two dog and cat guardians of the roof? But dogs are common to all these houses, and it's really nice when owners will leave you a note like this saying, hey, please go ahead and access the backyard. You have our permission. There is a dog there, but he's friendly. And then, of course, you start walking around to the, to the back of the house, and you see the sign in the window. Hmm, I suppose just beware of the friendly dog. I don't know. I had the note, so I went for it. Then other times you get a note swearing to you that there will not be any dogs on the property. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, is this considered a dog? This is one of those uh, half poodle, half Labradors. So, I don't know, still a dog, a Labradoodle. He was friendly enough, but I thought it was funny to have the note telling me there's no dogs, only to find myself greeted by this fluffy, scraggly dog here. Sometimes you make it all the way to the roof, and then the owners of the house start staring you down and wondering, what are you doing on our roof? No, this is something to be seriously cautious about, a second story window. Oftentimes people won't answer the door when you show up for a roof replacement inspection because they're not expecting you, they think you're just a salesman. And if you go ahead and head on the roof, I've had some pretty uncomfortable moments where I pass by a window like this only to find somebody in the bedroom. I always turn my head away from a window when I walk by. So just in case someone's there and I'm spotted, it doesn't look like I was looking into their house. Now, why did I take this picture? This is looking down from a roof at a very angry dog that was barking and barking and just furiously growling at me. Why did I take this picture? Well, that's because I dropped my city badge and my mag strip key card from my shirt pocket into this dog's uh, little domain of terror. So I spent the next uh, 20 minutes or so finding a neighbor and a coat hanger so I could try to pry my badge out from between these fence pickets here before the dog got a hold of it. Then there's other hazards that I guess you could say they live at the house, but they're not pets. You really have to watch your face and hands and what corners you come around on these rooftops at certain times of year and in certain parts of the country. We've got a lot of wasps in Colorado, and this is something I keep a very close eye for. Even just being startled when you're on a roof pitch, that could be enough for your reflexes to knock you off the roof. This was a really scary one. Walking down to the edge of the roof by the gutter and reaching your fingers over the shingles to feel for the edge metal, you might find other surprises lurking there underneath the shingles in the gutter. Not the typical place for a wasp nest, so always keep track of where you put your hands and your face when on these roofs. Other hazards are a little different. There are hazards of you being blamed for something you didn't do. I like to be sure when I show up to a brand new roof like these I'm going to show you here, and you find all this damage done to the roofing. This is due to people walking on the roof when it's too hot and the asphalt becomes liquefied. I always make sure that I mark my tickets and I take photos and explain that the roof was damaged before I got there. I have had times before I learned that where I was blamed for damaging the roof on a hot day. Sometimes you show up to roof damage like this. This is wind damage on the roof that happened from the time it was installed before the time that it got inspected. But this isn't just because the sealant strip didn't seal down in time. If you look here, you can actually see that these, sh these shingles were damaged and defective from the beginning when they were installed. So this is something that really should not have occurred. There's been plenty of other times that I get to the house, knock on the door, nobody answers, I climb up on the roof, and I look down and find this. And I realize I'm on the wrong roof. I read the address wrong. These are moments you very quickly and gently and quietly sneak back down from the roof, pack up your truck, and get the heck out of there. 
very nervous moments, especially in case somebody were to have been home but didn't answer the door before you started climbing on the roof. Many more fun stories I could tell you that have happened to me, like the ladder being taken down from an owner who didn't realize what I was there for, trying to trap me on the roof. Anyway, I digress. Other hazards of being blamed or things that you have to pay attention to when you're on these roofs are situations like this. Not damage to the new shingles, but damage to the siding when the new step flashing was installed. So the contractor that installed this roof clearly damaged this siding, and these are things that I need to put down on my report to make sure get repaired. Now, other times the siding is already in just horribly decomposed and deteriorated condition, like this siding. But it was clearly pulled out so that this step flashing here could be installed. And this could have been buttoned up a little bit nicer. You can see the top edge of the step flashing exposed. So I wouldn't say that this has been a sufficient joint made between the new roof and the existing siding. The siding has to be pulled out often for new step flashing to be able to be tucked behind it. And what happens sometimes is the siding doesn't get put back in place. You can see from this angle the nail head that's sticking out. And while this may look pretty minor, this entire sidewall of siding was just flapping in the wind because all of these nails had been pulled out and none of the siding reinstalled correctly. And in this case, if you look here, you can see when this siding was pulled out, it was actually broken. And instead of being reinstalled, it was just sort of left laying on the roof. These are, again, things that are the responsibility of the roofing contractor. And I would write these up on my inspection ticket. But what about this situation? I showed you in the previous sessions about these nice counter flashing that's installed into brick and it's either placed in the mortar joints or curved into the brick. This is the most effective way to counter flash against brick. But what happens when you show up to the new roof and you see this? The counter flashing just mangled and cut out of the way and then new flashing slapped up there with just a globity glup of sealant. These are tough. Does this meet? the minimum standard of the code. What I always have to remind people, and especially homeowners in my work, is D minus or better is still a passing grade. This is probably meets the minimum standard of the code. This is D minus work. And while I wouldn't accept it as a homeowner, as an inspector, I don't have that option to look for A work. D minus or better passes inspection. Now here's another situation of clearly completely deteriorated siding. This siding is beyond its useful life and needs to be replaced. But the owner doesn't have the money for that. They do have the money for the roof replacement through a hailstorm claim. And so when we look here and we see that the step flashing comes up the wall and has nothing counter flashing over it, then I say this is still the responsibility of the roofer. When they came out and bid their job and gave the sales pitch for the new roof, they saw the condition of the siding. And they don't have to replace the siding, but they've got to make the joint of their new roof up to whatever siding is left. As you can see in this picture, where a large piece of flashing has been extended up the roof to reach whatever deteriorated siding they could get to. Or in this example, where if you look to the left of the photo, they could get the step flashing tucked behind the siding but there was a piece of siding missing at the bottom, this last triangle piece that is often a problem. And so to properly create a joint to the house, they installed their own piece of counter flashing. Now I'm gonna take you through just some funny things I've seen over my years of doing roof inspections. This is just kind of a visual little ride of some of the goofy stuff that you see out there. Again, to just give you perspective from an inspector's point of view. So what about this step flashing job? Does that look nice? Would you accept that on your home? Probably not. I know I wouldn't. But does this meet the minimum standard of the code? That's often a question an inspector has to ask. Not how nice the work looks, how sloppy or crappy it is, or would I have it at my house. It's does it meet the minimum standard? Is it D minus? And my determination was this was not D minus. The IRC states the step flashing has to go four inches up the wall and it has to be continuous behind the siding. So with these exposed top edges of the step flashing, I would say this is not continuous behind the siding. Now ridge caps and hip caps, these are notorious for being missing on roofs. Now I want, to, I want you to understand the roof pictures I'm gonna show you, these are often roofs that were in, uh, replaced maybe a month, two months before the inspection. 
We have so many hail storms in Colorado, we get very behind on roof inspections. So these roofs were sitting in the rain like this for months at a time. And you can see here where they ran out of ridge caps and forgot to come back. In all of these examples, these are final roof inspections where they just never made it back to finish the ridge caps. Or maybe to finish the entire back low slope roof. Um, yeah, this was a bit of a problem. See what what we have to remember here is homeowners don't often get on their roofs to verify that the job has actually been completed. All those ridge caps missing, homeowners can't see that from the ground and they don't go up on their roofs to verify it. They count on us to verify it. What about these situations where the new roof was installed but the small little bay window roof was forgotten or this bay window roof was forgotten? They ripped off the old shingles and they got the underlayment down but forgot to come back to shingle it. So part of a roof inspection is honestly just going around the whole roof and making sure the job was completed completely. Here was a funny one to show up to another modified bitumen low slope roof. They ran out and just decided to not come back and put that last piece on. This picture brings back some really frustrating memories. It took me four reinspections to get this small 12 inch piece of edge metal up on this gable. Four reinspections to get this work done. And guys, this was not a difficult piece of drip edge to find. It was in a condition like this. Easy to see, easy to access. Talk about a frustrating piece of metal to get installed. And then there's times where you find things like this that you just have to scratch your head. They forgot to trim back the overlapping shingles from the top side of this picture where they overlapped over the hip. But somehow they went all the way up the hip nailing off all of these hip caps without noticing these shingles dangling out. You just have to wonder sometime what people are thinking. Or perhaps this roof done by a homeowner that maybe needed to read the installation instructions a little better. These shingles are just put straight up the roof in four different columns. What about this one? This is another modified bitumen roof, and it's not part of this class on asphalt shingles, but I like to go through some of this anyway. This looks nice, right? This looks great. Well, like I tell my kids when they're looking around their bedrooms for something, you can't just walk in and look and say you can't find it. You have to get down on your hands and knees. You have to move some things around. You have to look under things. And that's what you have to do on these types of roofs. You have to actually come in and look at the seams. This roof looks good, sure. Now let me get down low and actually start picking at some of these seams that are supposed to be adhered together and see if they're holding. I can see in this one, it's not sticking. It's sticking a little, but not as much as it should stick. And so when I start to peel this back, what am I finding here? Remove film completely before application. So we can see here why our modified bitumen is not sealing down. Because they don't expose the sticky stuff on the bottom for the sticky on the top to stick to. So this... So this is actually something that happens more often than when you would realize. These are all conditions and times where I have come to this same exact situation where they forgot to remove the film from the adhesive on modified bitumen. So just a little side note when you're inspecting those, you've got to pick at the seams a little bit. Now going back to just missing parts, here was some step flashing installed under an eave, and they did what the code said. They installed the step flashing, but they failed to install any counter flashing or anything. There's no siding for it to tuck behind. So again, just missing parts. Doesn't take a lot of expertise for these types of finds on a roof inspection. It just has to do with getting down on your hands and knees and looking around the entire roof. This was another interesting one. This was months after the roof was supposedly completed. And I show up and there's shingles still all over the roof, including loose edge metal just laying over here loose sharp metal flashing to be blown off in the wind so this contractor completely failed to come finish the roof off and pick up their supplies as well before calling for final inspection now i'm going to end this session with a little story i call this a roof leak story this is my personal story of an experience where i missed something and then kind of how i found it and i don't know we'll let you we'll let you see the moral of this story as i go through it 
So here I am in the building division office in the morning. This was after a major rainstorm. And I get a phone call from an owner on a roof that I had already passed the inspection on. And the owner tells me on the phone, my siding is crying. Water is dripping out between my siding. This wasn't happening until after my roof was replaced. So I was a little skeptical about this comment. Siding is leaking from a roof replacement? What is this woman talking about? Nonetheless, I'm a service provider for my community, so I came out to her house that day and take a look at what she was talking about. And sure enough, you can see from the water staining on the siding here that indeed water has been just emerging between the laps of her siding. I was certainly intrigued at this point and did some investigating. This is a garage wall. And so on the other side of the garage wall, it was unfinished. That was a big plus for this, for investigating this situation. At the top of this wall, the black Celotex didn't go, it just went to the bottom of those truss cords you can see at the top of the picture on the right. So I was able to kind of reach my arm in there with my phone camera, and I took a whole bunch of random pictures to see if I could get any clues. This was one of the pictures I found. And you can see here is that black Celotex that's between this, the wall and the garage side. And what you're looking at here is the soffit board, the horizontal soffit board, outside above the leaky wall uh, and underneath the roof eave. And you can see the water staining on the soffit here. Now if I look up kind of towards the direction of the top of this picture, I got another photo looking back towards the roof that this soffit was intersecting. And again I can see more water stains right here. Now this isn't an actual picture of the roof that I was investigating, but this is a picture that shows the condition and the scenario, the architecture and shape of the roof. This would be an example of where the siding was leaking, and the photo we just looked at from inside the soffit was a view looking towards this roof this way, where the soffit dies into a roof that's sloping downward. So back to the actual job that was leaking, what I found was this. At that point where the soffit intersected the roof, I got down low on my hands and knees and looked underneath the gutter. Now this picture is not aligned correctly for maybe full understanding. The shingles look flat. Let me turn the picture. This is actually how the picture would, would be situated. The roof water, if, if we zoom in a little here, we can see the water would flow down the roof this way, also coming out of that hole of the gutter above. But what you can see is some water was sneaking around this way because that step flashing ended too high up the roof. And the water was able to sneak into that soffit area and then from within the soffit, that water was leaking in this way and then running down this. This is a horizontal soffit, so it was just slowly kind of spreading out within the soffit and leaking down the soffit and down the wall there on the left and thus behind the siding and leaking out between the siding. So indeed, a roof replacement error was creating a situation where the siding was crying. And so if we look at the fix for this, I stayed on site. The roofer had met me out here that day as well. He was equally intrigued. Together we found this error and then I stayed on site while the roofer installed this one simple piece of step flashing to come down further and seal off that gap from the site where the, into the soffit. One simple 60 cent piece of step flashing. And if you look from up top, you can see here that new piece of step flashing installed inside the gutter and behind the edge metal. So the lessons I learned from this is the same lesson I teach my kids when they're looking for something in their messy bedrooms. If you're looking for things, you've got to get down on your hands and knees sometimes. You've got to look under and around. One sneaky piece of 60 cent step flashing was causing a whole roof leak at this house. And who knows how bad that leak could have gotten. The other thing that I learned from this is, well, just that. A very small little piece of metal can sometimes make or break a whole roof inspection. Be humble if you make a mistake, do your best to fix it, learn from it, and then share what you learned with others. My name is Glenn Mathewson. Thanks for learning with me today and letting me share these stories of my experience as a roofing inspector.